Hello, my name is Donovan Brown. If you enjoy this video, you can follow me on Twitter or you can also follow my blog. In this video, we're going to talk about code coverage. One way to ensure high levels of code coverage is to use test-driven development, where you actually write the test before you write the code. Using new features in Visual Studio 2010, we can actually have the IDE generate the code for us. After we do that, I'm going to show you how to configure code coverage inside of your Visual Studio environment and also inside of your team builds. To begin, let's create a new solution that contains our test project in it. So we're going to choose test and then simply give the test project a name and also change the name of the solution as well. Once we have that set, let's make sure we have the button checked to add it to source control and click on OK. Visual Studio will go ahead and create a new project and also add it to source control force inside Team Foundation Server. We can delete the unit test class. We won't need that one. Go ahead and get ourselves some more screen real estate here and then add a new uh, class library. This is going to be the project that's going to hold our code that's going to be generated for us by uh, Visual Studio. We don't need the class that's generated. The test project is actually going to generate one of those for us. Let's go ahead and delete that one as well. Then go back to our test project and let's add a new test. We're not going to add a normal unit test. We're going to add a new test type for 2010 called a basic unit test, which is a very lightweight version of the standard unit test. So it doesn't have the test context and the other uh, properties inside of it. So now what we can do is go ahead and give ourselves a nice descriptive name. I like to use names that talk about the component we're testing, what we're actually doing to it, and what our expected results are. So months from now, I understand what this test is doing if it actually fails. So you don't have to watch me type. I'm going to go ahead and use some code I've already prepared and format it with Control k Control d If you ever need to format some code that you've just pasted, that's the easiest way to do it. And I'm going to use a snippet here, so I can just type in test m and tab tab and it'll go ahead and fill in the rest of the uh, test case for me and go back in and give it another descriptive name uh, so that I understand what this is doing uh, in the future. Press enter and now I'm inside the body and then again I can go ahead and just use some predefined code Control k Control d to go ahead and format that up nice and pretty. As we can see from our errors list here we already have four errors we want to go back and clear those up but we don't want to write the code we're actually going to have Visual Studio generate it for us. By using a new type we can even tell it what class library we wanted to put it in and then choose what type of access we want and simply click on OK. It's gone ahead and actually added that for us leaving us with two more errors, one for our sub method which we need to stub out as well and also for our add method. At this point we have all the code generated that we needed to do so we can actually run our test cases. If we run our test cases at this point in the test driven development process all our tests should fail and as you can see from our test results our test have. So just right click on the test, go view uh, test de result details and we can see that it failed. You can click on the link in our call stack to get right to the code that we need to implement. So I'm going to go ahead and write just the code I need to to pass this particular test. And then I'm going to copy this line but to copy it I'm not going to highlight it. I'm just going to press Control C that copies the entire line that you currently have your cursor in. Then I'm going to go back in and simply make this a minus instead. And now if I go back and I rerun my test all my tests should pass. So let's go to test menu and simply go run all tests. You can also do a control RA to run all your tests as well. So now that we have all our tests passing, let's go back in and let's configure code coverage. This will tell us exactly how effective our testing has been. So just double click on your lo local test settings, go to data diagnostics and make sure you check this box. You must click configure. If you don't configure it, you still won't get any code coverage results. Simply check the box of the class library you're interested in, apply those changes, and now rerun our test. So we're going to go back and rerun our test here. And when we do so, we're going to have the ability now to go back in and view our code coverage results. At this point, we can see that we have 100% code coverage, which is exactly what we want. So now what we want to do is check in our project so that we can use it inside of a team build. So we simply check in, give it a nice comment. You're going to uh, regret it if you don't several months from now when you need to go back and look at what you were doing. So go ahead and give it a good comment, click on check in. That'll check it inside of TFS, and at this point we can go and configure our build. So from the Team Explorer menu, I'm simply going to right-click on the builds and say I want to create a new build definition. We're not going to go into great detail on this here. I can do another video for build, but we're simply going to move through very quickly. Give it a name. We're going to give it a continuous integration trigger, which means it'll check in. Anytime a check-in happens, we'll actually start this particular build. And I'm going to drill down to the folder that I want. There's no point in downloading files that I don't need to perform my build. I'm going to tell it where I want it to drop the output for me. 
And then on the process, this is where it gets very important for code coverage. Make sure you have the proper solution selected, but more importantly than that even, is to make sure at this point we have the correct local test settings file. The same one that we modified in our solution, we need to tell the build about. Otherwise, our build will not generate code coverage. So if you're running a build and not getting code coverage, that's probably the step that you missed. So let's go ahead and close this out, save the changes, and now we have a new build that we can go ahead and queue up. So let's queue our new build, and I can go ahead and click on new and our build is going to go off and start running. By double clicking on this I can actually see its real-time status and see how the build actually progresses. Again, if you do not get code coverage results in your build, chances are you do not have the proper uh, test settings file selected or you don't have any test settings file selected. As you can see here, our build report shows that we have 100% of our blocks covered and if we'd like to we can actually expand our test runs view the test results just like we did before of this particular run click on that same icon and actually verify that we do indeed have 100% uh, code coverage so there you have it a quick tour of test driven development inside of Visual Studio and how to configure code coverage inside of uh, Visual Studio and team build if you have any suggestions or comments feel free to leave them good luck